elements. Light underscore candle is now lit. Streaming art. art stream. <laughs> to your 56.
hello. Welcome. I've got a little rat hanging out right over my shoulder there. Being a sweet little dude. He was very snuggly this morning. Very small. A for little rat. Yeah. He was fighting with his brother just a bit ago, who was hanging out just kind of right <clears throat> here. Um, and being a sweet little guy. They were doing some fighting. Cactus was being very cute and fluffy, as he likes to do. And he's probably going to jump up on the back of my chair pretty soon here, judging by the way he's looking at me right now. Sweet guy. Um, hello, hello, and welcome. Let me get some tunes on in the background. Um, I was going to do some art and then decided I could just do that on stream a little bit. Gigante or 56. Time to eat for Baron. Yeah. Jay a little Fetter. Baron breakfast. They were having a boy brawl. A boy brawl for a baby bear and a catechist. Um, I guess we'll start with this. This is just kind of our classic background music, but it's not quite the vibe I want today. Maybe tunic music would be better. I love the soundtrack, so I think we'll have some of that on. Um, anyway, what I'm planning on working on today is a piece that's um, inspired Hunt. by... What is up, hey, welcome, Lemon. Uh, a piece inspired by this book, uh, What Moves the Dead, which was uh, gifted to be my J, actually. And um, I'm very early into it. Uh, but a within dinosaur. like the first Lemon. scene here, our main character is... Or, I, I imagine our main character, kind of our perspective here. Let me fix that for you, Lemon. Such that you may not be in Adworld for some time. Gigantier 56. Yay at Lemon Kind. There you go. That should solve your Adworld troubles <laughs> for the near future. <laughs> um Jay Z better. Ha. <laughs> Lemon kind. Want thank you. Of course. Um Yeah, so uh the very introduction to the book is looking at these mushrooms that are so like red, they look visceral and um they're just coming out of like a stone wall or gaps in stone. Um, so what I want to do here is have this be kind of like the back of a barn. So this wall back here is what we're really going to have as like where the mushrooms are growing. Jay-Z better. Ugh, that scene is such a great way to start that one. Yeah. Um, we're going to have eventually, let's see, which which layer am I on? Yeah, I should be on this one actually um i want to have like kind of a, a crack going through the the base here that gives us some sort of uh little um reflective puddle um and the overall like structure of this area i want to be kind of barn like so we'll have some of this you know like crotch cross hatching thing going on throughout and maybe some more stuff going on like back in these spaces but I want this wall to be just kind of uh, out of place like a, a stone wall inside of this wooden barn and um, just have the like little bits of mushroom kind of peeking out from behind some of those uh stones and then like reflected in the the pool as well so that's the dream here um how well i'm going to be able to execute that is another thing but we'll do what we can here um i was just getting this 
kind of back wall set up, and I figure we'll kind of tackle this in zones. Um, so the back wall, I'm going to start with maybe, how about I, I start with like one of these sides here just to kind of help myself get warmed up. I've got one layer here where I'm putting all of my uh, like lines for perspective and all of that. Ah, nope, I don't want a, a rectangle. I keep getting the um, the line and like geometry tool here mixed up with the what, frame tool. And I don't really know what special utility that frame tool would have. So we'll use this to make up kind of the... Am I on the right layer there? No, I'm not. Okay, let's get back to the right layer. So these are kind of the the boards in the ceiling. Jay Z better. Have you been enjoying the book? I have. I haven't gotten um, very far through it yet, um, but I'm really enjoying what I've seen so far. It's just so spooky, <laughs> so good. Very uh, very cool environment thus far. And it's interesting to see, because um, this is the same story, or is it inspiration for The Fall of the House of Usher? My pen doesn't seem to quite be lined up with things. I don't know if there's a way to like recalibrate that. We can tinker around with that later. Um, have this kind of supported against the wall here as well. Lemon kind. What book? Uh, the book is called What Moves the Dead. keep putting these things on the wrong damn layers. I guess it doesn't matter too much with these first couple of layers where I put what. But it matters enough to bug me when I get it wrong. Lemon kind. Nice very straight lines. Thank you. I've got a decent bit of stabilization going on right now. I've also, I've been thinking about, wow, buddy, he's got a lot to say. Um, I've been thinking about, like, the mechanics behind drawing a little bit. And one thing that stands out to me is um, that effect where, like, the moon seems larger in the sky than it actually is. You know what I'm talking about? Where, like, our eyes are telling us that it's taking up more space just because it's kind of like notable there. I found that I'll do the same thing with angles yeah. um, where if something seems like it uh, if I know that there's an angle between two things I will tend to inadvertently exaggerate it. Hi, buddy. <laughs> We've been joined by a little rat who's clambered up onto the back of my chair. Hi, buddy. What's going on? What are you about? Okay, he's going. He's elsewhere. Doing rat things. Lemon kind. Guy rat friend. Yeah. 
Very friendly. Very much a rat. Um, eraser. I don't want to get too far like into the weeds here. I want to figure out like the shape of this space a little bit better. Like one thing I, I want to work on that I know is just a limitation of my technique at the moment is I, I can do a very good job of like pulling up a reference image and picking it apart, right? Like I can figure out, you know, shading and stuff like that. Um, but um, what I want to get better at is the kind of thing where you're, you know, like developing the anatomy of something more organically, right? So like setting up a, a head and a body and then like, you know, specific kind of points of interest off of that body and using those to figure out like how things tie together is just not something I'm super good at yet um, or at all good at. <laughs> and I want to figure that out. Um, so we'll we'll allow this to be kind of rough for now. Let's get. I am going to bring my stabilization back up. I figure it's okay if things are like a little bit warped around my subjects because this is kind of a a warped place. Correct layer here? Yes. Hi, baby rat. Let's climb back up onto my chair. I guess I shouldn't have this line here either. Or this line, because we've got some depth to those pieces that I haven't really well defined yet. Okay, something like that. I don't know, that works out to me. stuff back in this area here. We'll get to it. Keep that there for reference. I should have those stay in place while I'm kind of in this stage of the process, right? I just don't like it being there because I know it's not going to eventually be there, but I will have to make my peace with that. Let me get over here. Let me get same dealio going on on this side. Did 
those seem thinner. Like it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it to be good. It helps that we're, like, theoretically dealing with wood here, too. Because it's gonna be imperfect and warped, especially if it's chilling in a barn that has, like, a just puddle pond thing cracked into it in the back. I should more explicitly have that go down to the floor. should go yeah further across okay now we're getting that kind of roughly hewn what do I want to do for the the ceiling here I'm kind of thinking like some sort of cathedral loft thing would be cool but more realistically if it's gonna be a barn we're gonna have some planks kind of going across. And maybe some sort of frame structure up top. We'll figure it out. Like, we could do kind of a loose arc structure through here and make this a, a frame of different bricks which is also a thing I don't super know how to do <laughs> but we'll figure it out Hmm. We'll see. I think shading is going to be the key thing there. Um, for the ground, we're going to have, like, you know, a couple of patches of, like, you know, hay bales and stuff like that hanging out. Maybe some, some barrels for good measure. Barrels don't look like that. Kind of outward. You know, make it clear that this is kind of a a storage space, a, a quartermaster, but out of use.
I guess we also have the question answered of like how far back this goes. Like, is that the end of the room there? I think so. I think that that's kind of where the room ends. And then this is sort of where it ends on that side. Okay. I mean, one thing I could start to do kind of right away that would potentially be helpful would be, and I think this is what the framing tool is for, right? I can identify some different zones here. And pull these back like behind all of that. Is that what the frame is for? What does it do? <laughs> what does framing things do for me? So I could also use the polygon. Well, that's that's not helpful. I want the polyline, I think. No, no, no polygons for me, thank you. And I can do that to just like separate out these spaces a little bit more for the sake of shading and stuff like that. I can Jay Z better. You're using the frame border tool, right? I was messing around with it a little bit. I don't know like what its use case is. I can kind of broadly highlight different areas here and say, you know, this is all this part of the the background. This is all that part. And we've got wall over here. And over here we've got like the whole back wall. I just don't know what the like most useful way to start to organize things here is. Because I guess what I want from the frame tool is to be able to divide out different sections and say like everything I'm doing is just happening within this one section right now but I don't know how relevant that is Jay -Z better. frame border is mostly to make comic strips gotcha that makes sense Do we want a... I never really use the, the pencil tool. This doesn't seem like an especially useful pencil. But I also just like straight up don't use pencils. <laughs> I have done all of my notes in pen since like the beginning of college. I don't know. It's just a thing. Okay. I mean, I can start vaguely identifying what the... Um, kind of 
kind of cobblestones might look like. If we want this to be kind of a cobblestone thing. I don't know how to do cobblestone, actually. I, I changed my mind. I've been liking what I've done recently with, like, the the ruins in Pal World when I've been designing stuff there. So here, maybe on this layer, I'll start out with kind of a, a gray fill. Hi, baby rat. Gigantier 56. I remember multiple colored pens from speech and debate. Yep, lots of lots of note taking associated with speech and debate, and that's probably where my pen thing started. Okay, I'm not super worried with following the lines because I am going to put this behind this color layer eventually. And we'll kind of work our way through different layers of coloration. But let me fill with only this editing layer, all of that. I want it to eventually be brighter than that, but this could be kind of like the, the flat color for that background. Is this starting to look a little bit wall-like? <laughs> Maybe. I don't want it to be too regular. Too many, like, flat, up-and-down sort of patterns. Jay-Z better. I think so. I'm just kind of filling in the space a little bit more. I think that as we cover more and more of these kind of vague, empty spaces, that helps. Yeah, I think that's looking more wall-like than it was just a second ago, <laughs> at the very least. Okay. Let me have this go back a little bit further around the edges now that I have thought a little bit harder about how I'm doing coloring through here. Hi, baby rat. He's being a little bit of a menace. I think it might be because of the rain. We got some light rain earlier and he sat by the window and just breathed in a whole bunch of rainy air and now he's a menace. Okay, um... We're going to have mushrooms on this wall eventually. I don't know if we're ready for mushrooms on this wall just yet, but I can at least start to get kind of a rough idea of what these mushrooms look like. And this is something where I absolutely uh, could and should do this with reference. 
But I feel like in general, what the mushrooms do something like this when they're on a, a wall surface. Like we get a little kind of upper layer. And then we get something kind of moving downward. And they're not always like perfectly symmetrical, but like that could be a bit of mushroom. I think the perspective is maybe a little bit too deep there. Maybe something more like... that. And of course I think we get the most mushroom information from having a bunch of them close by each other. Jay-Z weather. We went on a hike up memory grove today mm. and the rain was great. Excellent. Maybe I should do mushrooms on a, a new layer since I'm going to color them in also. And I don't know if there's like a practical limit to how many layers I go through. think the worst way to go for spooky mushrooms. We need some like smaller outcrops through here. I could probably do this with a, a thicker pen to start with. I think I should look up some reference here. I'm like not dissatisfied with what I've got. But so like this is sort of what I'm looking for. I think something more like this here. Let's see. We're getting warmer in this area. And I do like the way these are kind of layered on top of each other. I think that's cool. trying to get a sense of what these look like from different perspectives. This is kind of what I was going for a little bit. seems like we're looking at kind of bright colors near the edges and then a rich color on top it's more saturated okay I'm keeping that up on my 
other monitor here. Um, and let me, this is, I'm glad that I decided to do this on a new layer because then I can just revise as much as I want to. Okay. So I like how um, stacked up some of them were, that we'd get kind of these big collections of mushrooms all layered on one another. practicing, warming up, figuring out mushrooms. <laughs> I don't want them to be that smooth though. I definitely need to turn my stabilization down and that's going to give me some better mushroom shapes. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm imagining um, the fungal grove a little bit here. Or sundered grove. Um, the mushrooms and risk of rain. get some brightness in here. Um, let me hide this back layer. I just want to work with these mushrooms. Maybe I should hide that, keep this kind of transparent Chasing there. Better. This also reminds me of Coral Highlands and the <laughs> stream elements. Enjoying the stream? Don't forget to follow to catch me later. Subscribe if you are into that kind of thing. Okay, so we want some kind of light oranges. Yeah, yeah, the coral highlands in Monster Hunter World are very fungal. to be that thick. Let's... I do like, um, I think I'm going to use this to give myself kind of a lighter outline brush and then I'll actually fill it in with the darker um, deeper orange and I want to keep some of the kind of roughness here but I'm pretty pleased with how these mushrooms have turned out that's something that I've really enjoyed about just like the art process in general 
being like, I want to learn how to make this kind of thing. Let's look at those for a while and like see how it kind of translates into technique. And also starting to recognize a little bit more of a process here has been helpful. So I can more confidently say like, you know, it's okay if these mushrooms right now really pop out from the wall and seem like they don't fit there because um, when I go through and do kind of more of a pass for lighting, that will make them more cohesive. It'll make them make sense a little bit more. Kind of place them in the space. It's interesting how much darker they seem when I get rid of that background. Um, but let's add a new layer and let's fill these in. I really tried for the other editing layers. And this will look better once I move the layer back. Those are looking like some good mushrooms. I think I want them to be redder overall. So let's actually, let's undo the filling in. Cause kind of the whole point is that they are like menacingly red. And I'll have like, I don't know, some bleeding going on there a little bit from them. Okay, back to this kind of main layer here. Is I using a five for these lines? No, not a five. I think I was using a, a three, yeah. Um, yeah, back to that, we've got a kind of puddle that has been carved out here between some of the cobblestones. And one thing I I want to do here, and I believe there's a tool that could do this, I just don't know quite how yet. Um, that'll be my next thing to figure out. I want to um, take what's going on on the wall up here and copy it, flip it into this space, and um, 
just kind of like apply some distortion to that <laughs> so that we get like a, a good reflection effect going on. Like I said, I don't know quite how. Maybe I should have some like some cobblestone still kind of breaking out into this and I shouldn't uh, totally disregard like what I was doing with perspective up here. So any stones that I do have should be kind of angled off of that. then the important bit is that this is a little bit sunken into the ground. And then we've got like the the pool of water itself sort of down in there. And this is where having different kind of layers of color, different sorts of frames I'm working with would be helpful. What is... Oh, that there I don't need anymore. This I can actually... Disregard. I'm going to bring it all the way down here to say that I just, I don't need to worry about that layer anymore. My perspective layer will still be handy. Yeah, this layer is going to go down below that. And that's where I'm going to start putting in... I don't know, is that a, a waterish sort of color? Like, not super. I think the biggest learning curve for me here has been um, learning the things that I don't need to be as precious about <laughs> in digital art. And that's where I feel like my 
just general artistic lack of experience has not necessarily helped me out, but it's definitely meant that I have fewer habits to unlearn. I'm actually, like, kind of intentionally leaving a little bit of roughness in there. Jay-Z Bell. Your sketch lines are really nice. Thank you. I'm having fun with them. Jay-Z Bell. It's a good stylistic choice. Um, I mean, a good stylistic choice that is not at all done by choice is, um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I do appreciate it. I just, not much of this is super intentional if I haven't, like, brought it up. Um, so it's like, oh, I'm, I'm glad it's working, but... I don't know if I could confidently replicate it, you know? <laughs> Jay-Z better. Oh, I was talking about you saying you were leaving a little roughness. Oh, yeah. I suppose that part I am sort of trying to do, sort of a, a concession to this whole deal. So, I don't know, something like that. I kind of tried to make it a little bit wider near the bottom for the sake of some vague uh, <laughs> perspective. I suppose I could come up here and... Getting a little bit too sloppy there. This soundtrack is so good. I talked to some of my students on uh, Friday about playing this game, and it really is this is the Tunic soundtrack. It's a game that um, I would recommend to anybody and say, go into it totally blind. Don't look anything up ever. Um, and if you're stuck wandering around totally lost for you know, longer than you want to, kind of try to make peace with Good that. Jay-Z better. Haven't played it yet. Yeah, it's a game where, like, if I could... Um, just like erase my memory of it and 
play it again. I absolutely would. <laughs> I suppose I could also set up some kind of cobblestone hatches along here. I don't want them to be straight up and down. This is where we get some, some perspective in. Don't want them to be that large either or that in line with one another. on my color layer, I'm realizing now. But that's okay. I'll just have to make sure whatever layer I use for coloring in this floor more um, is behind this layer. <laughs> nothing. What does a bunch of hay look like on the ground? Let me look it up. coming off. Wherever that happens to be. It's not very perspective of me, but something like that would kind of get the job done. I mean, I should probably start getting the floor of this barn area in next. Let's start by getting some just kind of rough colors in here. I want it to be lighter than that back wall. And I also want it to have kind of a, a little greenish tinge to it. Something like that maybe. I think that's too much. feels a little better. Can I 
fill, referencing only this layer. Yeah, and I can like jump a little bit between these colors. Like I might want to keep that other color present a little bit to help just make this floor rougher. Because roughness is something that I also want to get better at. This will give some suggestion of like the, the cobblestones as well. I'm going to, like I did with that area back there, kind of start to fill in and cover this with anything that sharp going on. I am worried that some of these things are going to end up looking like too regular, if that makes sense. It's like, I like some patterns and I don't want to pattern these things too much. Okay, let's let's keep going with layering on some of these different colors here. Let's get the wood of these beams. And this I do want to be careful about around the outlines. So let me actually zoom in and Because the only reason I could be really rough with things earlier was that I trusted future me, which is now present me, to make sure the other layers jive with that by being careful. Those um, <laughs> little overlaps there are for future future me, which is just future me now that we're in the future. I love the ability to fill based only on the current layer because it means I can do things like this and have my sketch layer be kind of rough and I can keep some color back behind here. And have it all kind of agree. Lighten this up a little bit. As I fill in this side here. I'd be curious to see how many layers like actual artists use. Like am I being frugal with my layers or not using them efficiently enough. Would it make sense potentially to have 
like each of these blocks of color that I'm putting in as its own layer. Jay-Z better. Haha, I usually have around 40 to 50. Okay. That is good to know. And like Photoshop was weird when I started using that a little bit because my uh, district that I work for pays for it. Um, like I would get to a point where it would just freak out and think that I didn't have enough memory to do the things that I wanted to do. Like it would not let me draw any more. <laughs> What are you good for? And that wasn't even um, like a layers problem per se. That was something else. I guess I could have all of this be the same color. Jay-Z better. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I eventually hooked it up to my external hard drive I haven't had that happen. and it stopped complaining, but it seemed to think that I just did not have enough memory for anything else. the soundtrack <laughs> and it's kind of perfect for something like this you know it's very light and floaty oh this is above my line layer okay let me move that up just so I know nope and let me move it up and then let me click back onto the correct layer. I'm glad I caught that when I did. Yeah, I will be posting the final product here in the Discord. If final and product are even words that can be applied to what I'm doing here. just have to finish up this run down here what was this supposed to be I just left a squiggle on the background there I guess I could have like a rake or something hanging up on that back wall but that's definitely not what I was thinking when I left that up there. Okay, that's promising for, for that wall, and I'm looking at the kind of mini view there, but that's, that's looking pretty good. I should maybe use this same color here. Maybe just while I have these colors re readily available and I'm going through the process, I should go over to the other side and do the same thing.
Yeah, let's do that. I'm surprised by how quickly it pixelates. Um, let's just listen to that again. It's a good time. <laughs> Jay-Z better. I like the color you chose for the shrooms. Thank you. I think I think it's gonna work out once I uh, actually like shade things in and get some shadows going and all that. for the big wall here let's see where's my line layer that's my line layer okay here's what I'm gonna do here to potentially save myself a little bit of time I'm going to close up my lines as much as it pains me I guess I don't need that closed there. Well, my thinking is I could, now that I've got those closed, I could come back to this layer and I could say fill and refer to other layers with this color here. Let's see if I'm able to make that work. Yeah, actually that works out pretty well. It does mean that there are some lines I have to get rid of here on a couple of different layers. Oh, that's my mushroom layer. That's what's going on there. Mainly um, this layer here, my perspective layer. I need to get rid of these lines. But actually, I should do that before I fill this in with color. that connection there. Let me go to my line layer. Other lines I don't want to keep. I guess back here we've got some perspective layer stuff to 
take care of. And otherwise, I think that's looking fine. Okay, so let's go back to my wood layer. Oh, no. Get all that covered. Okay. go a little bit darker there for this piece and this piece. And then darker still for these little corner bits. That I actually don't want to include. Is that going to do it? If I now fill that, perfect. Um, I'm realizing that here, actually, I haven't <laughs> completed this piece. Let's get back to my my line layer. Here you are. Yeah, so this actually needs some depth to it, please. And perspective layer. Let's erase. that. And now, back to the wood layer. Let's fill that in appropriately. Okay, what is this looking like when we zoom all the way out? We're starting to get like a real honest-to-goodness space here. And of course I can add some like grain to the wood. Jay Z better. If I hate a nickel for every time I find unfinished lines in my line art, I would never have <laughs> to work a day in my life. Yeah. I like to think I've just accidentally made a good opt optical illusion um also this is my is this my line layer is this my line layer this is my line layer we should have a line right up here for that plank as well i guess i can darken and better define some of these lines that were really just parts of my perspective um, layer. So that'll help to better define some things. Okay, back to the wood layer. That's looking like reasonable, I think. <laughs> looking like an honest to goodness thing. Um, okay, so then behind the wood layer, we're gonna have some more stuff to add, like hay bales and barrels and all of that.
I guess I also did say I had a plank going across the top here, didn't I? to goodness thing. I want to address this back wall a little bit more. And I want it to be kind of like a wooden red barn sort of wall. Let me actually hide these we'll get a layer going on underneath that where I'll kind of try to share what I'm thinking about. This was the, the hallway that I used as reference, by the way, for <laughs> the very beginning of this, just kind of reminding myself how perspective works because I haven't used it since high school. Um, but yeah, we've got what like wooden frames here and then kind of you know this sort of frame cross hatching thing show up yeah behind that good so I can build this out all the way there's theoretically like another beam back there having to confirm for myself that the things that I'm doing are not going to interfere with the layers I've already put work into. Well, that's going to be kind of a lighter wood back there. This I think I want like painted white. And it'll also need just the teensiest bit of depth to it. The teensiest bit. layer behind this one kind of a gray I guess that's a fine place to start and I can close things up and patch them up um we're going to use kind of a, a reddish 
sort of muddy gray for that those back sections here as well. Oh, I can zoom out with this button. Does this zoom in? Okay, cool. I have buttons on my tablet uh, that I just haven't intentionally pressed a single time. So you're still open down here. And over here. Anywhere else? Let's find out. Oh, good. Guess this needs to be behind that floor layer. We're starting to figure some stuff out here. Let's add another layer. This is going to go on top of all of that, but behind the things that it needs to be behind. And this barrel, I just kind of roughed in initially. Where is that? It's right here. Do I want a barrel there yeah I guess so I want a better barrel there is the thing I think the top of that line is fine do something like that Jay-Z better every barn could use a good barrel indeed kind of a better barrel. It'll be an even better, better barrel once we throw some color on it.
I guess this is like such an isolated thing. I can put it in front of that ground layer. Pretty good barrel. gonna look better once we like start adding light to things um, and I'm realizing now that I haven't really done anything with like the the stone work on this kind of frame to this wall which is supposed to be a little bit out of place by design um, but that can be the next layer we work on here It's funny, I've got a little dab of background behind that. A little dab of wood. And I think I want it to kind of go into this arch up here. So let me go to my perspective layer. sketch layer and now let me add a new layer just above that one I'm starting to get light coming in my window. It feels really nice. It's a good warm sun. I actually have a, a daffer sitting in a little sunbeam down over here. Let me see if I can show you a little bit of daffer. There she is. Sweet girl. Sitting on the floor. Kind of hard to see of how luminous she is. Sweet little kitty. Um, oh, but light. I was going to make these around. Get some extra light there for Chico a moment. Here, 56. Warming up. Warming up indeed. Okay, I want these to be kind of pillars on the sides here. Jay-Z better. What a radiant dappers. A Grenifer. Beautiful sun child.
So we'll have some kind of stones through here. Making up this arch. Jay-Z better. Might want to swap back to your screen. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, I've been just messing around with these uh, like stones up top <laughs> for a little while now. Thank you. <laughs> we want some iconography going on here. I think we might want some iconography going on here. Jay-Z better. Haha, <laughs> of course. one perspective lines still kicking around back there or that they were attached to things that I actually wanted to keep like these walls so, I mean now if we zoom out we're getting like a pretty good thing going on here. You know, there's still some areas that really need to be filled out. We need these walls of the barn to make sense. wall. Let's have a, a new layer that is just a, a wall layer. Maybe here we've got a, uh, a rake hanging up. We've got to figure out how to do a rake. Think rake thoughts over here. Mm -hmm. 
Or I guess they have to think wall thoughts first, right? Um, maybe I want to do these walls in a similar style. <laughs> no, like the, uh, the implement. I think I'll have these in a similar barn style. watching somebody play a, a spooky game yesterday that featured rakes. The cryptid. Seems like a fun time. The game, not the the cryptid. Jay-Z Fenner. Which game? Oh, I'll have to look up the name of it, but it was like not quite an observation duty style game. It was more of a... Um, it, it was like a, a spooky cryptid quiz sort of deal. Let me... Actually, I want this to be done on another layer. This over here doesn't quite make as much sense as I'd like it to. That's looking pretty good for that side wall there. We've got some like ceiling stuff to figure out. I think it would also behoove me to define my floor through here better and to go back over here and fill that out. still have to figure out what this pool is going to do, like how to make that work for me. And I've got some ideas, I'm just not 100% certain. Like mechanically I'm not certain how to get that effect across. Here this is our, our walls layer.
So I guess I really won't see that back corner. Let me, let me zoom in for my sake. have gone for this so far. Um, except that actually I want to be on this layer. got to do that hay bale, <laughs> this pile of hay in the corner. Which I maybe should not have just added straight onto my line layer, but I can mess with that in a bit. I'm really pleased with the point we're at with this where I feel like every little bit that I add on to it is just kind of completing the world more effectively. I can actually get rid of that layer straight up for the most part. I guess on this layer, I'll put these lines up through here. And we'll just have to see what we want to do with that roof. I've had my stabilization set to zero for a little while now, and haven't even cried a little bit. And <laughs> just making it work. Okay, let's get a layer right behind our wood layer here. Jay-Z better. They grow up so fast. <laughs> this is where we'll have our hay bale. Which is, I guess, not so much a bale of hay as a pile of hay. Hi, baby rat. He came rushing on over to the window.
and we've gotten to the point where future me is actually thanking past me for their efforts to keep things nice and tidy because it makes my job through here a lot easier I do still have some things that I need to do for future er me, but not a lot in the grand scheme of things. I think this color is a bit too bright, but I'm going to be addressing that in a moment, or at least trying to figure out a way to address it in a moment. And actually it's not too bad now that I'm looking at that like corner image if it's in pretty okay. But I do want to add some kind of you know, hay stuff going on here. I think the main things that we have left to figure out are the pool here in the center, um, some more detail work on the ground. I'm just trying to figure out which layer that's on. It's on this layer, okay. So here I want to add to what I had going on over there as far as the um, groundwork goes. Just to flash out some of these spaces off to the sides. I am pleased with how my technique for putting in like walls and such has developed just over the course of this piece. <laughs> okay, so let's think about this. I have this right here really representing the space that I want to isolate there. So what I could do is put something below that space. What happens if I come in here and can I draw in blankness? Could I draw in some blankness on top of that layer? Like if I go up here, it doesn't seem like it. So the thing that I do here will need to kind of fit into that zone.
So if I lasso like this here, can I copy it? Do I need to tell it which layers to look at? First, let me hmm. let me think about this. Can I just take this and say Jay Z better? You should be able to shift click all layers. Oh, okay. Shift and then click and do that. Or are you talking about coming over here and Let's see the layers I'm concerned with or Really this. Okay, so I've got all of those layers selected. Now, if I lasso tool around this, So I've got all of these layers up here, but it seemed like I also had... Okay, so I have two copies of what's going on in those layers now. I think I see. So what I should be able to do is grab those three layers and say, yeah, I want to move these around. I'd love to change the shape of this box so that it's not just the same uh, angles and everything like I want to to shrink down some pieces of it does that make sense and really this should also include a piece of the wall back here so I think Like, I, I want this rectangle to really turn into, like, a trapezoid. Free transform? Jay-Z better. I think there is a perspective tool.
This seems to be doing the thing that I want it to. And then I can take those layers and just kind of blur and blend them. But I also want like that wall in the background to be represented. Let me cancel all that. Let me deselect. So I want those. And I also want... Oh, okay, so I do have a patch of wall. Now that I have that patch of wall selected as well, I should be able to bring that down. Just figuring out like what all I am selecting is tricky. <laughs> so let me hide the original wall. This is looking really good. Thank you. So that should be the original wall and mushrooms and all that. So now, if I select all of these things and move them, I'm moving the things that I want to. They're moving in a way that I agree with. Let's take that down here. Let's retransform. these all to be behind the floor. Expand my layer bar. Can I take all of these, put them I think what I want to do is come here and straight up um, erase the water. 
This isn't really how reflections go though. Like the mushrooms aren't going to be bigger on the ground than they are up there. And we can show the original wall there. So The group that I was selecting is this here, this here, yeah, all of that. So let's What if I take the transparency, like, way down on those? Like, that's kind of closer to what I was trying to accomplish. Kinda. <laughs> It'd be cool if there was a tool that was just like a, a reflection tool, but you'd have to give it information on stream elements. Like everything. Enjoying the stream. Don't forget to follow to catch me later. Subscribe if you are into that kind of thing. What happens if I take this and yeah, I'll apply the transformation. And then I want to Okay, I can liquefy what's going on there, which might kind of be what I want. It's not that watery, though, or that uh, that wavy of a a puddle. Maybe something like that is good. Never mind the fact that this should actually be flipped. That's better. Let's get back to free transforming. Just scrunch all of that down. Okay. That was frustrating to go through. But I do feel like we, we got somewhere with it. I want to add a little bit of, like, vaguely blood-ish stuff running down from the mushrooms. Jay-Z better. I tried adding water to an illustration once, got very frustrated, and then spent a month studying water techniques. Water Ooh. is rough. I believe it. <laughs> this 
spending a month studying water techniques sounds like some weeb shit. I like that. I like that effect on the mushrooms. S H H H H. J Z better. Don't doubt me, Lee. Act that. <laughs> Let's on this layer just delete this little perspective dot that I had in the middle. Yeah, I mean that is feeling pretty nice. Um, I don't know. Thanks, rest ring. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do with the roof here. I don't know if y'all are hearing the motorcycle going past outside. Uh -huh. Hey, Nanners, welcome. Uh, folks, say hi to Nanners or uh, Boom Boom Banana, who is uh, another friend of the House of Cats. Hope all is going well. Welcome to the stream. We are designing some stuff and really trying to read these layers down here. Is there a way to make these icons larger? Does anybody know? <laughs> Jay Z better. I think that's in view. View. I don't know. I, I just want these like preview pieces kind of behind the chat. Where I've got all of my layers to be larger. But like, I'm figuring out where I am. I think that that all I can kind of deal with, with some shading. Let's go back up to the very top of this, create some new layers to work on some shading stuff. Um, so let's, let's do kind of a wide brush here. And I'm gonna blend all of this in. Jay Z better. Okay, so quick Google search says the options menu by the layer palette looks like three horizontal lines. Thumbnail size, use size choice. Additionally, thumbnail display oh, settings hey. change whether the thumbnail shows entire canvas size or just the layer color. Oh hell yeah! Area. There we go. Nice, thank you. That will definitely be helpful in the future. Jay-Z better. Yeah. I want the light to kind of be coming from this wall back here. but I also sort of want it in shadows a little bit.
Like, I think that right there made our mushrooms fit into the piece a lot better. So maybe the light is kind of coming from this frame around the shrooms. get some shadows in here oh this is also something that doesn't technically make sense <laughs> up in this corner we should have things resolved a little bit better we'll mess around with that I also don't have like as much of a process for lighting as I probably should. Not just as far as like technique goes, but also workflow wise. I don't have a good sense of like, okay, I'm gonna start with these kinds of pieces and then work my way to something else and you know, all that. Get some edge shading through there. And like it's mostly worked out for me pretty okay, so I haven't looked too closely at it. But it's something I probably should look more closely at. Um, I'm also thinking I'm gonna add some kind of like just rings of heavier shadow through here, just to kind of pull the eye in toward the center. kind of a non-diegetic shadow. It's not strictly here because anything is casting a shadow, but more because that's kind of how eyes do. I think that's a nice effect.
I hope that in doing all of this, I haven't muddied the image too much, but added kind of enough mud to it to make it stick better. I think that this is just about done, actually. Um, I should go back to this wood layer and fix up the um, missing plank or the, the plank that is currently just entirely two-dimensional. Jay-Z better. It really popped out by you doing that. Yeah, I suppose I could add some color to the cross or some like detail around the edges to show kind of how it's been carved directly into the stone. Okay, that's probably fine up there. Um, so yeah, let's get back up to my shading layer. And we can see here, this is one of the really nice things about digital art. I can just take this layer off and see like what a difference it makes. I like all of the shadow cast on the, the mushrooms there. <laughs> That's, it's spooky. But yeah, let's get in with a finer brush. And this I probably won't even um, try to blend too much. I think ideally the next step in kind of the progression of my lighting process would be to get a lot better at um, like using color in my lighting to like add extra warmth. But I think for now, for like a two hours and some change piece, I'm really happy with this. Let me add some physical shadows to some of the objects we've got here. Lovely, slightly ominous feeling to it. Yeah, and that's uh, that's kind of the hope. Let me get a Brennifer down into here. The lighting is excellent. Thank you. Let me add some shading along the the edges of the pool. Here, let's bring the opacity up a bit because I don't want to have to do a bunch of passes along here. Kind of lighter through that side, darker in some of the more aggressive corners. I 
guess I could <laughs> if I wanted to be thorough here. Fill this in a little bit. Let me actually go to the the layer I used for the ground here. By that I mean let me go to the layer I used for this pond here. Correct some of that. Okay, back up here. Okay, so that's like the whole piece. Um, I don't know if there's anything else in particular I want to like add to this or change about it. I definitely don't want to draw a horse in here, and that would be like the next step to making this truer to the inspiration, which uh, once again was uh, the book What Moves the Dead, um, which... I've been enjoying so far. I'm only a little ways into it, but it's very good. I think I'm going to continue reading it um, once I'm done with stream here, which uh, is now. Now is when I'm done with stream. <laughs> let me put on some tunes in the background and let me scoop Agrenifer. up a critter. T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher, yes. Jay Z better. Yeah. Yeah, let me scoop up a baby and I'll be right back and we'll wrap up stream I'll get it baby animals stream today um, and I'll see y'all probably on Tuesday we shall see um, I might stream a little bit tomorrow as well because we've got a three-day weekend here um, if I uh, don't see y'all tomorrow have a happy President's Day and I'll see y'all adios Like the one knuckle, like the one knuckle. Jay Z better. It was very nice to watch and relax too. Thank you for the stream. Gigantier 56. Good evening, all. Abrenifer. Bye, all.